Okay, guys, we're back for our last part, um, our last lesson for the week, and we're going to finish up that skirt sloper. We don't have much more to do on it. We're just going to label it property, properly and get all the little bits and pieces um, all ready. So let's head on over. Now essentially where we left off was a, a pretty much finished. We just had to put in the darts, uh, correct the grains, label it, all that good stuff. So let's zoom out, see what we have. So we have our back piece over here. If we remember, it's always on the left side. Unless you've moved your front over there. But um, if you uh, have not labeled it and get it mixed up, remember that you can always tell the difference between the measurements here. This measurement of the uh, waist, I'm sorry, hip arc should be larger on the back than it is the front. And you can also tell by the dart placements that you made. Um, the darts on the back are one inch, the darts on the front are five eighths inch. So that's how you can tell the difference. So let's go ahead and finish these up. And I think the first thing that we should do, so as not to confuse them, to making them easily uh, identifiable, is to change their name. Uh, piece should never be the final name of a pattern piece. Um, it is not very descriptive. So what are we going to do? I'm going to go ahead and right click on this piece, go to attributes. That is going to pop up our piece properties window. And here I can click and name it what it should be named, which is back skirt sloper. There we are. Now let's do the front. There we are. Now you may notice that um, the grains are a bit wonky. Uh, this one is incorrect. Of course, we should not have the length grain going this way. And this one doesn't even appear to be on it. That's because it's got squished way up here. Now why, why that happened on both of them um, is because sometimes when you join two pieces together, obviously each piece had its individual grain line and grain direction. Uh, and Optitex gets confused on where to put the grain um, and in what direction to put the grain because it tries to just sort of, you know, blend the two and it, it doesn't really do a great job. So whenever we have join pieces together, we usually have to reset and correct the grain line. So let's do this one first. Now, it's all the way up here and um, I can show you that um, by zooming in. At least I think I did, yeah. See, it's... <laughs> this is not a very good grain line, yeah? Uh, so let's fix it. So we have to really do two things to this grain line. We have to change where it is because it shouldn't be all shoved up here in a corner. And we have to change its direction. So I'm going to go to my toolbox and go to baseline. Remember that OptiText calls grain lines the baseline. A little funkier, I guess. Um, and what I want to do is I'm going to hit new baseline. Now this is going to erase this one and reset it based on the full piece. So it, although it may not be the correct grain line, it'll be positioned a little bit more um, better. And there we are. Again, it's not correct, but it is um, right there. So what I'm going to do now, now that it is in a better position, I'm going to use the set baseline direction. And I want to use the center front for that. So again, it's best that we use, if there is a line that is parallel to the grain, it's best that we use that just to make sure that it is perfectly aligned uh, with what we want. Um, <laughs> that's interesting. So um, uh, uh, obviously we need to do some additional fixing. So I'm going to right click, go to attributes, and it's going to pop up the piece properties again. Now I'm going to go into description chat. Uh, text and that adjusts this the the piece name the uh, this they call it the description text um, and I'm going to hit adjust cross my fingers to make sure that it does what I want okay good it did 
If not, I can adjust the size of the font and also the angle of the text right here, just in case the adjust doesn't do what you want it to. Most of the time it will. Okay, now let's do the back. Now the back should be a little bit easier because all we have to do is change the direction or set baseline direction. And just like I use the center front to set the front gray line, I'm going to use the center back to set the back gray line. And there we go. Now, um, just a little side note uh, on the gray line. You probably know this, but if you um, have noticed, there is an arrowhead on the gray line, but only in one direction. Now, what is that for? Well, that's for what we call directional fabrics. Now, not all fabrics are directional, um, but a lot are. So what is a directional fabric? A directional fabric um, will have different properties or look different depending on what way you flip it. So for instance, so all these are pointing up. Okay, that's great. What a directional fabric pretty much means is if I take a piece of fabric and I have it like this, this is my length grain, right? But if I flip it upside down, that's also the length grain. So there's a lot of fabrics where it does not matter which way you have it flipped up. Those are not directional fabrics. Directional fabrics all do matter. Now I might do a little bit more if this is confusing to you um, on how to tell the difference and, and what fabrics specifically are directional. But the best, easiest sort of example to um, indicate a directional fabric is to think of a directional print. Now this also, directional fabrics also apply to fabrics with naps, uh, twill fabrics, um, which have that diagonal ribbing, so on and so forth. But those can be kind of tricky to notice. But imagine I have a printed fabric, uh, say with balloons on them. Um, I want my balloons to sort of be soaring up and the little strings to be uh, falling downward here. I don't want, you know, um, my skirt to have balloons sinking down to the ground and having the little strings from the balloons um, sticking upward like that. That would be depressing. Everyone wants a floating balloon, not a sinking balloon. Um, so, although if we look at the fabric, um, the floating balloons uh, going upwards and the sinking balloons going downwards are both on a length grain. I can flip it and have it have the grain be correct. It just doesn't look very nice. So when we have the directional arrow that's telling us um, what direction the print or nap or twill should be going in. And essentially when you're working with a directional fabric, all of the arrowheads need to be pointing the same direction when you lay out the pattern to cut. This will ensure all your little balloons are rising up to the air and not sinking depressingly to the ground. Um, in this instance, Basically, we need to make sure that, again, I'm, you know, whether they're all pointing up or all pointing down, I don't really care. They're just all pointing in the same direction. Um, so this is fine because they're both pointing up toward the waist. However, this now is wrong. So this would mean on one side, the balloons would be rising up to the, si the sky and on the other um, back half, it would be sinking down to the ground. Um, that's not what you want. Um, so be careful, and just to know, the arrow will point. So if I click here first, go up and click again, it will point up. If I click here first and click down, it'll click uh, point down. So what, wherever your second um, arrow is, um, that is where, or second, wherever your second point is placed, that will indicate the direction of your arrow on your grain line. Okay, a little side tangent there, but just so you know, um, it's an important factor um, to making your patterns and making them correct, because of course, uh, you know, directional fabrics do exist, and are more numerous than you might think, um, and again, um, you might have, you know, the print is very obvious, but fabrics uh, that have a pile like velvet or corduroy uh, or suede tend to have what's called a nap, uh, which is also a directional fabric because that little pile, that sort of fluffy, fuzzy fur that's on top of the fabric usually has a grain direction in itself. So if you put it one way, it'll catch the light differently than the other way. and It'll look lighter one way, darker the other. Um, okay, anyway, so um, let's finish up with this. 
Uh, we have to put in our darts. So let's go ahead and zoom in on our waist. Now um, our back darts are going to be five and a half inches in length. And we already have the width set. So we're going to use a new tool too. Um, so a couple new tools on this project, uh, which is the dart tool or the add dart tool. It has a rather complicated um, keyboard shortcut command. So just you can remember control alt D. That's great. If not, it's a little diamond. And I'm going to click that. Now, remember that these are our dart widths. And when we use the dart tool, we set the width first um, and the length last. So it is basically three points, one, two to set the width, and a third to set the depth. One, two, and depth. Now you'll notice that it will snap perpendicularly to the contour. If you would like to angle your darts, hold the shift key then I can start to angle them out. Now, with the sloper, you should keep it fairly um, perpendicular. However, with your finished patterns, you should tend to angle your darts a little bit more like this. Um, and this is because it is more flattering to the waistline. So uh, we might get into that one day. If, uh, if you take a look, if we have lines, so that when the dart is closed, it's gonna create a line just straight down from the waistline, which is fine. It's constructionally accurate. However, if that line, I'm going to really kind of exaggerate it, goes diagonally in like that, and of course that's, you know, that's way more than you would need it. You just kind of need to offset it just a little bit. Um, this is going to create a diagonal line to the waist. And if we look at this, well, it'll sort of pinch inward, um, which actually makes the waist look smaller than if the darts are completely straight down. That will kind of broaden and widen the waist. Um, so again, either way you do it is constructionally, technically, technically accurate. However, angling the darts so they kind of point inward to the waist and flare out to the hips is more flattering to the female figure. Um, and again, since this is not a final pattern, we're going to be doing a lot of altering. We're going to keep them straight down for the um, pattern, but as we move on and create finished patterns, it's important to kind of remember that because we do technically, uh, or we do usually want our patterns to be flattering uh, on the wear. So, okay, I, uh, just to recap, I clicked here, I clicked here, and I'm going to bring this down, and it doesn't really matter where you click because as soon as you do, a little measurement box on the side is going to pop up. And here I'm going to set the depth. Now we have already set the width, which is correct, so we can double check our work here. Remember we set that one uh, inch depth here. And here I'm going to set that five and a half inches, so 5.5. Okay, let's do it again as there are two darts on the back. Okay, and let's go ahead and do the front. And the front we're going to do pretty much the same way, just the depth is a little bit shorter on the front. It's only about three and a half inches. Ooh, I was pretty close there. three and a half for both depths and we're looking pretty good. Um, let's zoom out again. And there's a couple other things I just want to do. Um, again, since this is a finish, not a finished pattern, we don't need things like if you want to do a, a style number, you can. It certainly can help you keep your um, uh, pattern pieces or slipper pieces uh, organized. Um, but I definitely want to know what size it is. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my text box and click on the back piece and put in some information. Um, so let's call it our skirt sloper. 
just so we can, as in, in lieu of a style number. And I'm going to do size 8. I'm not going to put any cutting information here, or I'm not going to put an on-fold line, because that kind of goes along with my seam allowance. Again, this isn't a totally finished pattern, because it's not meant to be a finished pattern. So we don't need to put all of the pattern information that we usually have on a finished pattern on our sloper. And let's go ahead and do the same thing for our front piece. Now this pretty much is done, and if you want to turn this in as is, that's perfectly fine. But, one other thing I think I should mention, just to be a little bit very nice, very, very good. Now, you might look at this and, and look at sort of the handout and say, you know what, and especially your old patterns from uh, maybe FD21, you might say, you know what, this is very jaggedy. I thought this should be a nice sort of curve. I want this to be curved. Well, let's make it curved. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just plop on these points, and I can multiple select them by holding shift, and I'm going to make all of these points curved points. Okay? So it's going to start to sort of curve it a little bit. Now here, it kind of made it kind of bow up a little bit. So I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to add, it doesn't really matter where, because I'm just going to use it to help shape the line, but I do want it to be a curve point. And I'm going to use my move point tool. And just kind of maybe bring it down a little bit. Maybe bring these down a little bit. Maybe bring this one up a little bit. Now it looks like sometimes this happens. I just want to use sometimes you need to do a little bit of cleaning. Oh, I found that. Aha. Okay. So this line I don't really want. I'm going to delete it. Sometimes you do have to do a little bit of cleanup. And I'm going to do the same thing to, to over here just to adjust. Make sure it's a curved point. And that's just going to allow me. Just to, just to nudge, nudge things around a little bit. You can see now it is a little bit smoother. Maybe bring these down because it kind of bumps up here a little bit. And again, this isn't completely necessary, but, um, you know, just to... Get exactly what you want. That little, those little final cleanups can be kind of important to get that nice sort of smooth blended. Might be a little bit too much. Okay, we'll do it on the front as well. So now you can see, again, it's a little smoother, it's a little curved, now it's, it's kind of curved up in a way. Um, I'm going to leave this if you want to clean that up a little bit, so if, let's take a look at that. You can. I don't mind it leaving it squared, but certainly a little bit better if we just pop that out. And let's clean up excess lines that we don't need. Which can happen sometimes if you draft a line first and then cut. Sometimes there's a little line. Oh, remember where that little line I said went away. So let's get rid of it. We don't need that. And let's, let's see if there we go. Uh, do the same thing on our, did I already make these curved? No, not yet. Well, this is, you know, this was a little bit less, so I'm, I'm just going to curve these guys. I'm just going to curve this. Oh, huh, interesting. Okay. Clean up 
clean up. I don't know why it made another line. I don't need that. Use the move point tool just to maybe bump this up a little bit. Blend it in. There we go. Bump that out just a little bit. Just a little cleanup, a little cleanup. Make it nice and neat and easy to use. Okay, and now it really is done. And there we are, there's our finished pattern. So once you are finished, of course, save it. And I would recommend you save a few copies of this sloper. Uh, we're gonna be using uh, the skirt sloper quite a bit to create other patterns. Um, so always have maybe a couple copies and versions uh, in case you go and you, um, uh, you know, alter this, so and so, so on and so forth. And also, once you guys have all handed in your skirt slopers, I'm going to um, post a skirt sloper onto Blackboard. Um, of course, not yet, or else you just use that one to turn in. Um, but if <laughs> moving forward, if whatever happens, if you do accidentally delete or change or, or um, save over, you know, you know, change and then save over your skirt sloper. You'll be able to use mine, um, which will be posted up on Blackboard in the course content section in the uh, under the pattern file, um, and you'll see it right in there. So um, when you're done, what you're going to do is you're going to save it as your name, skirt sloper. And of course, make sure it's a PDS file. And send it to me. Um, again, at my email, uh, katherine.dreski at kbcc.cuny.edu. Um, and I hope this was fairly easy for you. I hope you're able to um, connect to Optitext fairly easily. Um, and from here, we're gonna start to do some really fun things. We're gonna go over some pattern making concepts um in our next week so have a great weekend uh be well and again check out the puzzles so puzzle number two um contains uh the video puzzle number two contains the next puzzle as well as the solution to the first so check it out get those extra credit points that you deserve um and again be well be safe and i will see you next week <laughs>